Well, yeah, it's like two decades I've worked in, in this field and I've seen academic and other industrial labs and I've, and I've been around these places that the lab itself can sometimes be a second thought. It's brightly lit, maybe white walls and a lot of metal and it's probably loud machinery going on. And that's awful. It's not celebrating the, the humans that have to work on that. It's not celebrating the work. And it's certainly not celebrating this like grand vision of what these things are capable of. And when I looked at those systems, it was this huge opportunity. And I didn't know exactly what it would look like, but I knew that if, you know, with the support of an artist, maybe there was a way to actually put art on a quantum computer. Dope, dude. I had come from the aerospace industry where I created the first art show in space. We covered hundreds of spaceships with paintings and then drawings by the aerospace community. Eric came to me and immediately said that they're building a hardware device that is extremely unique and needed to have context with the viewer, needed to have some sort of value that the viewer could resonate with and find beauty in rather than be maybe scared of or repulsed by. Quantum computers and the refrigerators that we use to keep all of these cold are designed in a really beautiful manner. These metal stages, where each one is at a slightly lower temperature than the other, from 300 Kelvin to 10 millikelvin. And then the final one, it helps shield the quantum computer, the processor inside, from the Earth's magnetic field. And that's a big, shiny cannon. So he came to me with the challenge of, what can we do with this gorgeous piece of hardware that he had sent me photos of? that when it's all opened up, it's absolutely stunning like a jellyfish from a Jules Verne novel. It gets made of exotic metals and it's an absolute piece of wonderful jewelry. We've heard it called the chandelier, but when fully wrapped and fully working, looks like a beer keg. What was the canvas? Where would we put art? How will we actually make this really shine? And he's starting to think about putting things in the round. It's 36 inches in diameter. That is about 10 feet in circumference, 45 inches tall. And so the challenge was, how can you make a painting that hug it like the Bob Ross blanket of love? The canvas became the quantum computer itself. And first I explained to Forrest how the quantum computers themselves speak the language of nature, how it might help you know, solve these really challenging problems and how it can simulate nature better than any other computer. So we chose to wrap the quantum computers in landscape paintings so the viewer will say, wow, tell me more about this device. How does it relate to nature? How does the quantum computer speak the language of nature? We started with Yosemite, because that's a place that I grew up by. That's a place that is very relevant to me. We started to choose places that spiraled outwards. Anacapa, Chaco, Redwood. Then we started to choose places a little bit further out. And now we have artists working with us from around the world. I feel really honored to be invited to do this project and to be offered the landscape of the Delphi um, archeological site because it's in a part of Greece that I'm in love with and every chance I get, I go to visit this site. My thoughts about science and technology are nature, of course. So coming in with like the elements of the sun, sun being like the, the main character <laughs> in the natural process, it's kind of the leading thing, you know, that, that drives nature. And then adding in all these different abstractions, my style writing background, hip hop and design painting and custom car culture scene. I think that's what symbolizes for me is like the possibilities. So this piece actually wraps around a quantum computer. I love that part. <laughs> I've got art around a quantum computer. I'm able to 
take advantage of the dialogue that I'm having with scientists and with science and actually translate into visual forms. It's mind-blowing for me to walk in somewhere and realize like I don't necessarily understand it all but I have enough to appreciate it and translate it into a conversation that I too am about that quantum. I don't know what I'm doing but I'm also in a place of realizing like there is this kind of process that's happening. It's the unknown. It's the weaving of these places of entering and figuring out and seeing what happens. Now you look at a globe and you can point to different parts around the globe and see these spaces that are inherently beautiful and inspiring to all the people that work with us. And they immediately know that there's a reference and a sensibility to the nature of the painting, the cryostat, and the space that they are in. Right here where I had the pleasure of sitting and you know this is an example where I'd asked and posed the challenge to take everything kind of one step further on that was to build on that language that we had developed when we started the artist in residency program together and bringing in artists to then be a part of that with this piece and these pieces around me in the cafe. We are in the Lambda Cafe right now as we speak. I'm sitting in front of a painting that I did with Ando Pendelian and Ann Bound Crawford. Let's just see how that all translates into the acrylic. This was a challenge by Eric that said, this is going to be a space where all of the teams will come and sit together and have a space where we can all rub shoulders and ask each other, hey, what have you been up to? Let's break bread together. Let's really chop it up and see how we're all doing. This is a space where we can get nourishment, not just in the gastronomy, but we can get nourishment in the conversation. So as we build out the campus, it's important for me to have them be spaces that there's no edge between the architecture and the art and the scientists and the hardware and nature. So we found basically a concrete box, like we had a shell of a building. From the outside, it's this nondescript rectangular building. On the inside, at that time, we were very bold discussions with the architect and thinking ourselves as well as what were we going to really do in this space. We had ambitious roadmaps and hardware that we wanted to build in there, and we wanted to make sure that the space actually suited that vision, right? And how do you build a space that is the future of computing? What does that even look like? You really want to be creative and be in your mind and be thinking about these places and spaces and technology. Eric challenged me with designing and making the south end of the laboratory, the high base space, saying this is going to be a space that everyone who works on these quantum computers walks into. He said, historically, laboratories are sterile, they're very hermetic, they're very blank, they're very boring. And he said, what can we make in this lab that says the absolute opposite? Ando Pendillion, he is a trained architect, and he said, Forrest, you're going to make this mural, and unfortunately the wall is 40% windows. We had discussed the concepts around creating a temple of sorts, basically like a stained glass. We created a mural called Superposition, and that mural looked great on paper. Totally doable in my sketchbook after about 100 drawings. And then in realization was 30 feet tall and 100 feet wide and I brought in Ando to help. And we got on four stories of scaffolding and painted this piece in two weeks. And Eric would take off his badge as dope scientist at the end of the day and put on his painter jacket and paint with me for hours. And it was so awesome to have a lead scientist want to get involved. And that mural is an extension of the visual language of nature. What marks 
really feel like the physical expression of the world. And we look to these elements in nature in a lot of those places, like natural bridges, natural arches, these really beautiful canyons. And we wanted to make sure that the space actually suited that vision, right? And made you feel like when you came in there that it was inspiring. We do want to drive for the scientists to see the work from a different way. When I ask people what does a scientific lab look like to you, I would like for people to start thinking of the lab that we have built here as the thing that comes to mind. Thank you.